Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology and also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I'm standing just below the Parliament Buildings in Ottawa, Canada, in front of the Ottawa River. And this is a bike path that you see right here, which uh, winds around the river. But uh, right now we're experiencing the, the highest flooding that we've ever had on the Ottawa River. So what's the reason for this? We've had tremendous amounts of rain, um, both in Ottawa and in the uh, watersheds which feed the Ottawa River, the Gatineau River, the uh, Rideau River. So how much rain have we had? Well, the normal rainfall in April, uh, the climatological value, the normal average would be about 65 millimeters. So we had over 150 millimeters of rain uh, in April. And uh, since the beginning of May, we're only in, it's only uh, what, May, May 8th or 9th, something like that. So we've had 117 millimeters um, already in May. So if you add those two numbers together, you get about 270 millimeters roughly, uh, which, which is a hell of a lot of rain. It's uh, you know four or five times what we'd normally have over this period of time. There's, there was also a lot of snow um, on the ground which melted and saturated the ground. So the soil is composed of different particles of very, various types of gravels, and uh, sand particles, so gravel is fairly large size, lots of space between them, sand particles, uh, silts and clays, all these different materials. Um, it's also organic materials, so there's pores within the soil, and those are either um, air or water. So when the soil is saturated, they're completely filled with water. So any precipitation that falls, there's only it, it has to go somewhere. Okay, so there's some evaporation, some will be taken up in plant roots. Um, a lot will normally infiltrate into the ground, but that's not happening in this case, so it just runs off. So it runs off into the river systems. So, so the, we, there's, there's been tremendous amounts of flooding for people that live along the river system. In fact, a friend of mine in Fitzroy Harbor, um, his house was uh, flooded out. Most of the severe it was a very sharp pulse of water that flooded most people out. Lots of people were sandbagging and stuff, but on Saturday, um, on Saturday evening, um, there was a very, very rapid pulse of water on the Ottawa River. The, the, the river went up almost, uh, you know, over 20 centimeters, almost 30 centimeters, so over a foot in, in a very short period of time. And we've had tremendous amounts of rain Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, mostly Friday and Saturday. Like I said, 100, you know, lots, um, about 50 to 60 millimeters over lots of the Ottawa watershed in this particular storm. And this, this pulse of water, though, is when it rains over a few days, you'd expect the water to rise up, but there's dams controlling levels. So the level was pretty stable on the river and then it spiked up. And I've heard that um, in some northern reservoirs in northern Quebec that are part of the Ottawa, that the Ottawa fits, River fits into that watershed, there was um, danger of the dams. The reservoirs were full. There was danger of the dams overtopping. So they had to release a slug of water, which they did, and that last foot um, flooded out, you know, numerous houses, um, or numerous houses and cottages along the, riv the river shed. You know, over in Gatineau, so there's tremendous amounts of flooding in, in Gatineau um, on the on the Quebec side of the Ottawa River in Ottawa, um, and uh, also there's flooding out in BC. So, what is the root cause of, of this? Why why are these sort of things happening? Well, this particular level is about a one in a hundred year event. But what does that number mean, really? A one in a hundred years or one in a thousand years? Okay. What we do is we've assumed, we assume a stable climate. If the, stable, if the climate's stable, then we can look at the statistics of particular extreme weather events which happen naturally within the climate. 
and we can put a um, return interval on them, say 100, one in a hundred years. So what does that actually mean? It means that on any given year, there's a 1% chance or one in a hundred chance of that event happening. And that ha so each year, you know, you have that frequency, that, that probability of something happening. But this, if the climate is destabilizing or if the climate is different, or it's changed in some manner, then you can't rely on those return intervals. Now, those return intervals are what we rely on when we determine the diameter of a sewer pipe to put in a new city, when we determine um, how much asphalt there is in a region and how much uh, runoff will there be, how long the big do the drains have to be, in terms of how the you know, in terms of um, how we design our our, our houses you know, where we put them, things like that. These return intervals are, are crucial, but they're no longer valid because we've changed the atmosphere of our, we've changed the chemistry of, of the atmosphere and oceans on our planet with our greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change is accelerating faster and faster all of the time. We're in an abrupt climate change situation. So what parameters are changing? Well. Greenhouse gas levels are shooting upwards. CO2 surpassed 410 parts per million. It had a rise of over three parts per million in 2016, also in 2015. And it was very, very close, you know, very sharp rise the year before. So it's having record rises. Meanwhile, the International Energy Agency is saying that we've, the world has stabilized uh, emissions, the, the emissions have flattened off in the last three or four years for CO2. So if CO2 is still rising in the atmosphere at record levels, it means that there's more coming out from the oceans and from, and there's less, the, the sinks are failing. There's, there's less being absorbed into the ocean. There's less being taken up by plant matter on the planet. So this is an extremely concerning and worrying development. Um, temperatures are rising um, are setting ever record high levels and we talk about the 1.5 degree window for Paris you know two degree window for Paris with aspiration to 1.5 degree we're already you know approaching that 1.5 degree in fact for individual months we've exceeded it already um, and it's very important to look at the baseline the baseline for Paris is pre-industrial should be 1750 when you see numbers of temperatures relative to 1880, 1900 or so, you need to add, add 0.3 degrees on those numbers at least in order to get it to the same reference point of 1750. So why are we getting extreme weather events increasing in frequency, severity, duration, and happening in weird places on this planet? There's a very simple reason for, for why this is happening. First of all, we've for every degree Celsius rise in temperature, there's 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere. This is basic physics. Look up the, Clap, uh, the, the clausius clapeyron equation in physics. Okay, and then if you linearize that equation, um, because the temperature is in Kelvin, for small changes in temperature, like a degree or two or three or whatever, you know, it's 7% per degree change. It's linearized, okay? Um, so this is one main reason. There's more water vapor, it rises up into the atmosphere, it condenses into clouds, the, energy, the latent heat is released to fuel the intensity of the storms and there's a lot more precipitation up there. The atmosphere is a lot wetter. So what else? What guides these storms? Well, these storms are guided by the jet stream pattern. Now the jet, stream are, are jet streams are high altitude winds that circumvent the planet. Okay, um, and basically they mostly move from west to east because of the rotation of the earth, things that are moved. So why, basically they're formed because air is moving from the equator to the words the poles and then gets deflected and compressed and it creates these jet streams. Why is air moving? Because of the temperature gradient. The equator is hot, the Arctic is cold. The problem is, is the Arctic is warming much, much faster than anywhere else on the planet. We call this Arctic temperature amplification. What are the reasons for, for, for the Arctic to warm so fast? The Arctic is getting a lot darker than it used to be. So when the sun is up in the, in the uh, 
you, when the sun is shining in the northern hemisphere in this for eight months of the year, those darker surfaces absorb more energy and heat up the Arctic. Why are the surfaces darker? Because we normally have snow covering the land, the permafrost, when the snow and, and we have ice covering the Arctic Ocean. Those things are white, they reflect a lot of the incoming sunlight and the absorption is a lot lower. As the area of the sea ice decreases and as the area of the snow cover on land decreases, the Arctic becomes much, much darker. This is happening at a very rapid pace and because it's becoming darker, it's absorbing more solar energy and heating up. Therefore, it's heating up much, much faster. You know, the high Arctic five to eight times faster than the rest of the planet. Um, you often see a number two times faster. Where the, where's that number coming from? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so um, because the Arctic's heating that much faster, the temperature gradient or difference to the equator decreases. So the jet streams become, instead of going mostly west to east and with the small uh, waves in the north-south direction, they become very, very wavy. North of the, above the jet streams, we have cold Arctic air that's dry. Below the jet streams, we have warm, humid air. Um, so what we're seeing is we're seeing what we have is meteorologists call this pattern that we have right now that caused all of this rainfall an omega block. So the Greek, uh, the Greek letter omega is that W, the curvy W. Okay, so so we have a a, a trough and we have a peak in the middle, and then we have another trough. Now in these two troughs, we have the west coast of North America and the east coast of North America. And in the troughs, you have low pressure areas and this pattern has become stuck, so we get persistent rains. Another factor is that the Gulf of Mexico is the source of most of this moisture, okay? It's coming up. And also, so the Gulf of Mexico is much warmer than normal. There's huge temperature anomalies there. Much, much warmer than normal from climate change. Also, the Gulf Stream moving up the coast is much warmer than normal. So what we're seeing is we're seeing um, this gear pattern like a fire hose from the ocean. So as the moisture moves across the Gulf of Mexico, crosses Florida Panhandle, moves up the East Coast, it's getting warm it's getting picking up huge amounts of water vapor because the water temperature is seven degrees up to seven degrees celsius warmer than normal there's tremendous amounts of evaporation in the air that's moving over that water it's picking up all that moisture and then it's moving inland and and then it, it, it it's condensing out into the precipitation and then the gear is just repeating so we have the jet streams fixed we have this gear pattern fixed and uh, we're getting tremendous amounts of rain as a result. So um, hopefully we've crested, you know, it's supposed to have crested over the next few days. Um, and hopefully this pattern is broken, but that remains to be seen. So we've, uh, we've done a number on our climate system. We've changed the, the climate system and we're, see, we're seeing all of these consequences. So I've been, um, I posted, I've, filmed um, uh, almost several hundred of these bit type of videos and I've been posting on them over many years um, so you can find them on my YouTube channel just Google Paul Beck with YouTube and also I have a website uh, just Google Paul Beck with net and uh, you can go to my website and you can um, subscribe so that you don't miss um, the videos and things it's, it's actually quite it's it's weird today we've had rain we've had snow and we've had ice pellets my hands are starting to freeze so I think I'll finish up there so thank you for your attention and uh, stay tuned for many more videos thanks again